good morning myself ch pradeep kumar working as assistant professor in ramchandra college of engineering department of tripoli today we discuss about buck boost converter first of all it is also a one type of dc to dc converter okay here the main advantage of buck boost converter is here we are giving a fixed dc input voltage we are getting either the voltage should be in more than the input voltage or less than the input voltage that's why buck boost converter can be act as a step up or step down converter now let us discuss the operation of a buck boost converter with the help of a simple circuit diagram here in this circuit diagram the main components are switch as well as l c as well as the diode d where the inductance and the capacitance can be act as a filtering components now let us see the operation of buck boost converter with the help of modes of operation here we are having two different modes of operation okay while coming to the operation of a buck boost converter first of all the, what is the other name for buck boost converter the other name for buck boost converter is called as inverting regulator why the converter is called as inverting regulator means if you see the circuit diagram the input terminals are plus and minus you have to represent in the circuit diagram but if you see the output the terminal should be in opposite that's why buck boost converter is also called as inverting regulator now let us see the operation while coming to the mode one of operation the modes of operation depends on switching on and switching on off of this switch and on and off conditions can be applied to the switch first the uh, the thyristor t should be is in on condition whenever the thyristor t should be is in on condition automatically the diode in reverse bias condition now let us see the simple circuit diagram for mode one of operation is now the th the switch should be in on condition as well as the diode should be is in reverse bias condition now we are giving the supply vs vs is also called as a dc voltage that is vdc now the current transfers from vs plus to switch switch to inductor and the inductor to vs minus that means during this interval from 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to t on the inductor stores up to its maximum value already we are saying that here the we are placing a capacitor initially we are assuming that we are placing a charged capacitor we are placing a charged capacitor now this mode of operation the capacitor c discharges from c plus to load load to c minus now in this mode of operation the inductor charges and the capacitor discharges and you, uh, now we can see the operation with the help of output waveforms already we are saying that during mode 1 of operation during mode 1 of operation the inductor stores energy if the inductor stores energy from minimum value to the maximum value that means we have to show this graph linearly that means the inductor stores energy linearly from i minimum to i i maximum but the capacitor discharges during this mode the discharges means the capacitor discharges from minimum value maximum value to the minimum value maximum value to the minimum value in this condition the output current depends only on the capacitance the output current only depending on the capacitance 
Now let us see the mode two of operation. During mode two of operation, the switch acts as off. Whenever the switch should be in off condition, the supply terminals can be disconnected from the circuit. The supply terminals can be disconnected can be circuit. Now the inductor can be act as a source. It can discharge the energy and it can be represented as a source. Now let, let us see the circuit diagram for mode two of operation. During mode two of operation, the terminals should be interchanged from mode one. Now let us see the mode one of operation. We are representing plus and minus. Here from mode two of operation, we are representing plus and minus. That is opposite to your mode one of operation. Now the inductor represents as a source and it can discharge in the direction of L plus two load and load to the inductor minus. During this condition, the diode should be in forward bias condition. During this condition, the diode should be in forward bias condition. Now already we are saying that during mode one of operation, the inductor charges. That means we have to represent minimum position to the maximum position. Now in this mode of operation, from mode two of operation, inductor discharges. That means when compared to this polarities, these polarities are opposite. That's why we have to represent the inductor voltage is negative voltage. During this, the inductor discharges from maximum position to the minimum position. During this condition, the capacitor charges. Why the capacitor charges? Here L plus 2 C and C2 again L plus. That's why the capacitor charges linearly from I minimum to the I maximum. Automatically your output current depends on the inductor. Now let us see the <coughs> Output voltage equations. Now let us see the output voltage equations corresponding to the circuit. First, initial for mode 1 of operation during mode 1 of operation we are saying that the supply voltage is always equal to the your inductor voltage that means your supply voltage vs should be equal to l already we know that the inductor voltage can be represented as l into d il by dt that means rate of change of inductor current with respect to time with respect to time the inductor changes from maximum value to the minimum value already we are saying that it is increases linearly then automatically we have to represent l into i maximum <coughs> minus i minimum divided by delta t that is called l into the change in current with respect to delta t this can be represented as a vs or delta t should be equal to l into delta i by vs and this can be represented as equation one that is for mode one of operation now mode two of operation mode 2 of operation your inductor can be act as a source and if you are calculating the output voltage the output voltage is opposite to your inductor voltage why because what is the other name for block boost converter it is also called as inverting regulator inverting regulator that's why we have to represent V naught of average should be equal to minus EL. That should be equal to minus into L into DIL. L into DIL divided by DT. Now we are getting L into delta I divided by T into 1 minus delta. Now this can be represented as T into 1 minus delta should be equal to minus L into delta I divided by V naught of average. This can be represented as equation number 2. Now Now, we know that the total time period T should be equal to T on plus T off. Where the on period is delta T. That is, 
एल इंटू डेल्टा आई डिवेडेड बै वी एस प्लस वेर आफ पीरियड इज टी इंटू वन मैनस डेलटा दट मैनस एल इंटू डेलटा ई डिवेडेड बै वि नाट आफ यावरेज now we can common for l into delta i we can take the common for l into delta i we can get 1 by vs minus 1 by v not of average then l into delta i into v not of average minus vs divided by vs into v not of average already for a bug boost converter The output the average voltage <coughs> should be equal to minus delta by one minus delta into V S. Already we know that the output voltage should be equal to minus delta by one minus delta into V S. Now from this equation, L into delta I, and I can take the common as V S. V not average. Divided by V S minus one divided by V S into V not average. Now we can get cancel V S and V S. Now automatically capital T should be equal to L into delta I of V not of average by V S can be termed as minus delta by one minus delta minus one. Divided by v not of average. V not of average. Then L into delta i minus delta minus one plus delta divided by v not of average into one minus. Delta, delta, delta gets cancelled. L into delta I equal to minus one by V not of average into one minus delta. From this equation, one minus delta into V not of average should be equal to minus delta into V S. Substitute this equation in in this equation. Automatically, we are getting L into delta I should be equal to minus one by minus delta into V S. Minus minus gets cancelled. Then automatically, we are getting the total time period T is equal to. L into delta I of one by delta into V S. Now, why we are why we are deriving all these equations means for finding the value of ripple current. For finding the value of ripple current. Here, the delta I is also called as a ripple current. That is, T into delta into V S equal to L into delta I. Then delta I should be equal to T into delta into V S by L. Already we know that the total time period T should be equal to inverse of frequency. T time is inversely proportional to <coughs> frequency. Now delta I should be equal to delta into V S divided by L into F, where delta I is called as I L ripple. I L ripple should be equal to delta into V S by Lf. Already at the starting of the circuit diagram, we are saying that where L is nothing but a filtering component to reduce the harmonics in the circuit, as well as C is also act as a filtering component. Now let us see the calculation for V not of ripple. Okay. Now let us see the operation of V L ripple. That is very simple. Here, for finding the value, we know that V C of t minus V C at t is equal to zero should be equal to one by C integration of zero to delta t <coughs> dt. 
Now we can easily find out this value IC by C integration of dt is at t. We are applying the limits from 0 to delta t, then IC by C into delta t. Already we know that where IC, the capacitor current, is also equal to the average current. That is I naught of average. Then I naught average by C into delta T. That is called as where Vc of T minus Vc of T is equal to 0 can be represented as the ripple. That is Vc ripple. Vc ripple. And it is also called as a Vc ripple. Here, IL, inductance current. Here, IL ripple should be equal to delta into Vs by L into F. Now, Vc ripple, the capacitor corresponding term, Vc ripple, uh, Vc ripple should be equal to I naught F raise by C into delta T. Already we are knowing that L and C are filtering components, where L is used to reduce the ripples in the current. Now, the capacitor is a filter which is used to reduce the ripples in the voltage with the help of these two equations. Now, what are the applications of a bug boost converter? The main application of a bug boost converter is whenever we are having inverted, uh, inverted supply, we are using bug boost converter. Now, now, what are the advantages of a bug boost converter? The bug boost converter, the main advantage of bug boost converter is it, it can be act as a transformer without using a transformer. Already we all know that transformer is a AC device, but bug boost converter is a DC device. That means we can use it to step up the voltage as well as step down the voltage by using bug boost converter. What is the main main disadvantage of this circuit only the main disadvantage of this circuit is it changes the operation from step up to step down with only the help of a duty cycle only with the help of a duty cycle that means the time of the duty cycle is very very low that is only the disadvantage remaining all are the advantages this is the concept regarding bug boost converter thank you